welcome to Ukenic. In this video we're going to show you how to use the Ukenic OBD2 scanner to diagnose your check engine light. Here is our demo vehicle. This vehicle has a lot of issues. You can see airbag light, ABS, a number of uh, traction control uh, system errors and most importantly the check engine light is on. Now an OBD2 scanner is going to help you with the check engine light. It's not going to help you with ABS um, or airbag or issues other issues like that uh, remember these uh, vehicles today have more than uh, one control unit so the main one is the one that diagnoses the engine and that's what triggers that check engine light on when there is an issue that's very critical for the um, either for the engine or for the uh, emission system or in some cases it can uh, turn on if it detects a serious issue with the transmission so if any of those systems fail and they trigger a code you'll be able to read find out what code that is and um, clear it once you fix the issue so what you'll need to do is look underneath the dashboard all vehicles sold in the United States from 1996 till now the present will have an OBD2 port OBD2 port is going to look like this all right it's going to be the opposite of that um, and uh, it's going to be right underneath um, the, the dashboard uh, above the brake pedal you kind of have to use a flashlight and look down there sometimes it's in uh, there's a fuse box down there so it might be on that panel or sometimes you might have a little plastic cover that, uh, a rectangular shape cover that you need to pop off and then it'll expose the port but uh, once you plug this in under the dashboard then you'll be able to read it in clear codes which we're going to show you next okay so here we're looking at this vehicle and you can see right here is a little port Sometimes it might be further to the side here. Sometimes it, it might be covered, uh, be inside a fuse panel. But in this case, it's right here. You can see this. We're gonna pull that down. Okay, so you take your connector and it's a trapezoid shape. So you wanna make sure that you are lining it up correctly to the port. All right, so it's plugged in all the way. And now our scanner turned off. So right here we have uh, connected to the vehicle. You want to make sure that you turn on the ignition. If you have start stop button, what you do is you press that button once or twice, or you press and you hold it pressed for the ignition to turn on without starting the engine. So then once this turns on, you press enter. Here we can do. Uh, we want to press enter in diagnostics again. So it says erase previously stored data to save data from this test. We're going to press yes. This is data on the scanner. Here it tells you check engine light is on, 14 codes, monitors incomplete. Uh, here you can click the, the first option on, on that. So here we can do a number of things. Here we can read codes, erase them, and even do things such as uh, check if a uh, vehicle is ready to uh, pass the emission or the smog test as it's called in some states so you can go to read codes and press enter and then stored codes are permanent codes or issues that are uh, the engine control unit is sure that those are not fixed and they're permanent but there is also pending codes and, uh, and a lot of times codes are gonna show in there um, so you want to check both you can start with stored codes and this is P30 it says um, oxygen um, 2 sensor bank 1 sensor 1 is defective now or has open circuit so uh, you can what you can do is you can write down that um, that code and then you can do some more research so bank one sensor one that means it's the upstream uh, oxygen sensor and that has open circuit and most likely needs to be replaced now a code um, is this going to be a starting point because sometimes you might think that you have a bad uh, oxygen sensor, but the issue might not be the oxygen sensor itself. It could be the wiring, it could be maybe a bad Cali converter, but the, there's hundreds of fault codes. When you read the code, you can narrow it down to, you know, two or three possible issues versus, um, you know, hundreds of possible issues that can be causing that check engine light. So uh, this is going to be a starting point. I can help you really um, uh, narrow down the issue. But let's go back. I'm going to press escape. I'm going to go to pending codes. And then here you can see on the top right there it says code one of eight. So you, the same code again, uh, and then you have 72 uh, ambient air temperature sensor, and it says oxygen sensor bank one sensor two. So both oxygen sensor on bank one. Um, and then here you have more fault codes. 
it keeps scrolling. Uh, P300 is multiple cylinder misfire, uh, and then P301 uh, cylinder one misfire, and then P304 cylinder four misfire, and uh, throttle actuator control system. Now, this is our demo vehicle, and this is um, going to have a, no a number of issues. And, and for demonstration purposes, we're, we're showing you how um, the scanner can read from uh, different. Uh, different issues, but your car most likely is not going to have so many issues. It's going to have one or two codes, right? So here you can erase the codes, and what's then you can drive the vehicle for uh, a few minutes, um, and sometimes those codes will come back right away. Sometimes the codes can come back uh, a week uh, later if it's an um, if let's say it's a emission issue, it can can take a while for those codes to come back. But a lot of times you have a number you have too many codes that it just uh, um, it can be confusing so like here this in this case our check engine light of course isn't clear because the car detected that these are just open circuits the sensors are not connected and it's gonna keep that check engine light on but if it was let's say an emission related issue where let's say the gas cap on the fuel tank is not tight or has a bad seal it takes a while to detect that now it's important though to fix the issue all right uh, you can't just erase codes and, and assume that that fixed the issue because that doesn't uh, so one thing that you want to do is after you you recheck the codes and you come back and and then uh, you clear make sure there's no codes there you can also check if vehicle is ready to pass that mission or smoke test so you come down here to I am readiness press enter and then you do want to collect since DTCs were cleared. And then here it says check engine light. It says the status of that. It currently shows off, but as soon as we restart the engine, that's going to change to back on. And then you can see we just clear the codes, but you can see misfire monitor is on, fuel system is on, but you can see a number of systems are incomplete. NA means not applicable, it doesn't apply to this vehicle, but, um, but if it's incomplete, as you can see there, catalyst monitor is incomplete and secondary air system is incomplete, evap system monitoring is incomplete. So what that means is if you take this vehicle for a smoke test right now, it is not going to pass. Even if your check engine light stays on, what you need to do is you need to drive the vehicle and then it might take about a week for all these systems, all these uh, systems to be checked and for the engine control you need to change them from incomplete to uh, back to okay so once they all these switch to okay right once all of them switch okay then you can take the vehicle for a emission test but if you have incomplete then you're not going to pass the emission test uh, so even if you clear the codes or disconnected the battery if you got incomplete you're not passing if you got all okay and a couple of not applicable if you got non applicable you don't need to worry about non applicable systems but you do have to worry about the ones that say incomplete. And that's all. Thank you for watching.